Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I'd like to um, start off with saying thank you guys so much for watching my videos lately. It's been really fun um, just learning the program and learning together and um, getting all kinds of tips and ideas and stuff from everybody. So it's been a really fun adventure. Today the video is gonna be really easy. It's gonna be um, just showing what the difference between um, so art digitizing software and so what pro editing software um i think a lot of people get confused i myself was confused for a really long time i didn't understand why anybody would want so what pro if they had so art and i totally get it now so anyways we're going to start off today with um sns computing website it's it looks like it spells out sans computing, but it's S and S. So just go to that website and you'll find their front page and it shows, you know, it tells all about them, the requirements, where you can buy S and S products from. So you can, you know, support other businesses and go through them buying it if you want to. But you can go directly here. They have a shop button, support, contact, um, FAQs, and freebies. And the most awesome thing about it is they're really good at getting back to you. And um, if you have any kind of wish list, not like list, please don't make a list for them. They're very busy. But if you have a question, you know, or, or not a question, but something that you'd like to see changed in SOART, um, they will do it for the most part if they can, and they're really accommodating and sweet. And sometimes we mess up ourselves and we think there's something wrong with the program and you contact them all frantic. They're very, very nice <laughs> responding, you know, and kind of showing you what you did without making you feel stupid. So, um, anyways, so that's all the stuff that's available on their website. And like I said, they're really awesome about responding. Okay, so right here is So What Pro and So Art. I'm going to go with So Art first because most people, um, well, that I've noticed, they want to digitize their own stuff and they don't understand why they would need So What Pro to enhance their digitizing. And that's what I'm going to explain. But So What Pro is, uh, you know, awesome and standalone. You don't need to have so art to enjoy so what pro. So what pro is digitizing editor. So like you can buy a, a design from somebody else and a font from somebody and you can combine the two and make, you know, keychains, make, you know, embroidery logos, whatever. But you can make the design, you can combine two, two designs and you can link all the word letters together and um, and make it where, you know, if you've ever bought a font, you have to go in and space them and one at a time if you don't have SOA Pro or some kind of digiting or digitizing editing software. Okay, so right here is SOAR Embroidery Digitizing. I'm just going to read this really quick and um, Sorry if I'm going too fast. I'm going to read this really quick for you guys, and I'm going to explain a little bit down here. I don't know very much about the Mac, and I'm really sorry, but I have a feeling that it's not very different than SoArt. And I know that if you get SoWhat Pro, um, somebody just made a video showing how to use SoWhat Pro on a Mac, so or something of that sort. I know that it was a really good idea because it was about using it on a Mac and I know there's very little out there for that. All right, um, so SoArt Embroidery Digitizer. SoArt is an embroidery digitizer for converting raster image files, vector images, and clip art into embroidery file formats. Image processing tools and a step-by-step -step wizard are provided to produce an image suitable for yielding a high quality embroidery stitch out. Use the download button to install both the free three-day demo, no purchase necessary, and the retail version, as well as to update the software. Do not update during the demo period, as this will cause immediate expiration of the trial. Mac users should click the Mac download button 
to install the wineskin wrapper application file, which allows you to run SOAR on a Mac computer. Download the user manual for more details about the many features available in SOAR. And I never downloaded or even looked at the manual, but the next couple weeks I'm going to make a video. I'm just going to read through the whole manual for everybody and for myself, and hopefully that will... Um, you know, increase my skill in SOAR and help me to understand stuff maybe that I've been stumbling with. So um, you can have a 30-day free download, and I think that you get 60 saves. I don't remember, but um, which is way more than you're probably going to use. Um and 30 days, and and then it's $75, and then you own it forever, and it's super awesome to have. You have, you know, the ability to do so many things. There's just so many things that you can do with an embroidery machine. And, you know, there's stuff around the house all the time that I think like, oh, I could make that on my embroidery machine, you know, and I just go and do it. And it's so cool. Okay. So if you want to, um, buy this, you add it to the cart. If you want to download it for the demo, you download it here. And then however your browser downloads, and then down here, it shows international support. So it's going to show, it says, SOAR offers support for some languages other than English. To use this language support, download the appropriate language files from the links below and save it in your SNS computing SOAR folder. Open SOAR and click the options menu item, language support, and choose the desired language there. They have Denmark, France, Germany, Netherlands, Portugal. So those are the options that they give. Um, all right, so here's some features that they list. Reads raster or vector format images. Supports, supported input formats include BMP, PNG, JPG, GIF, SVG, WMF, and EMF. Allows images and other unsupported file formats to be pasted into the SOAR workspace. Converts images to high-quality embroidery files for sewing. Supports output embroidery file formats, including Brother, PES, I'm just going to write, I'm just going to say the names of the companies, Brother, Tajima, Janome, Melco, Viking, Nufaf, Viking, and Singer. These may be converted by Sew Up Pro or other embroidery editors to a larger variety of embroidery file formats compatible with most home and commercial machines. Contains image processing tools for converting images into color-reduced, smooth images suitable for digitizing. It includes a variety of pattern fills, which can be applied to sew individual regions of the image. Supports both auto-digitizing and manual digitizing options to give substantial user control over the digitizing process. My favorite is the manual digitizing option, because I have control over almost everything that I'm doing specifically. Okay, so getting started. The help that accompanies SOART contains a mini tutorial that describes the steps necessary to load input image files and convert them to embroidery files. After opening SOART by double clicking the desktop icon, click the Help Topics menu item. This will open the Getting Started main, pa main help page, which presents a step by step tutorial for using the various features of SOART. Several image processing tools are available in SOAR. In many cases, these will be necessary to use in order to reduce the color content and smooth the image files before it can be sewn. Usually, clip art images are already smooth enough to be sewn immediately, so these constitute a good set of images for starting to use the digitizing features of SOAR. So, my husband and I have been buying our clip art on Etsy, and it's been working out really, really nice, really good quality images, and you don't have to mess around too much with the colors um, because they're generally pretty low in colors as they already are. So, um, <clears throat> and there's so much to choose from. There's thousands to choose from and they're cheap. It's like $2 for, you know, a sheet of 13 or whatever. Um, but anyways, it's, it's really cool. So go on Etsy or you can probably find clip art everywhere all over the web. Okay. Once a suitable image has been obtained, the auto digitizing sewing mode is entered by clicking the convert toolbar button, the sewing machine icon. 
This presents a stitching toolbar from which choices for pattern fills, stitch angles, etc. can be made. Options for auto digitizing the entire image or just a single color or manually sewing each color in the image are available on this toolbar. Below is a clip art image that has sewn with sew art that was sewn with sew art using the default fill sorry, default pattern fill. The textured fill appears after the image has been converted sewn to stitches. In this case, the conversion process took less than five minutes to complete. More complicated images will take longer and require use of the image conversion tools prior to producing the embroidery file. Okay, and then the cool part is down here way at the bottom. They have um, listed, it says click on an icon below to begin playing the associated video. You may pause the selection carousel by moving your mouse over it. Note that the videos have been created over a span of several years, so the SOAR workspace appearance in the tutorials may be different from the current version of the software. So I suggest, you know, watch all of them because even the old ones, they're not that different, but everybody has a different way of digitizing and it's the best way to learn is by multiple teachers you know different years and and going back to the old but also looking at the new and understanding that they're not going to be the same you know don't freak out if you know you watch one that's four years old and then you look at yours and it's totally different you know the updates happen all the time and a lot of things change so you know but watch all of them and kind of get a good handle on it. Um, it's really cool. There's a lot of mine in there. Whenever I found out they were in there, I was over the moon, like that so I even noticed I was making videos. It was so awesome. Okay, so so our embroidery. I'm gonna go ahead and open it now and show you guys kind of what it does. Slowly. Oh, I guess I can close the web. Mm -hmm. It should open a whole lot faster on your computer. Everything opens slow on this one. Oh, okay, there it is. All right, so let's go ahead and open. We're just gonna do a simple, I'm gonna show you, I think, three or four different way, ways of doing one image, right? Yeah, well, anyways. Okay, so these are some of the ones I've done, but what I wanna do is I wanna go to my paid for clip art and I'm gonna do black dog silhouettes. I'm gonna open the PNG. The PNG doesn't have the white background as I understand. Um, but a JPG will have the white background. And I don't want the background. I just want the dog. So let's see. These are so cute. Hmm, that one kind of looks like my old dog, Eddie. There's probably a boxer, Doberman. Oh, yeah. Let's do a little wiener dog. They're so cute. Okay. So here we have a wiener dog. We just opened the clip art that somebody else made. And the cool thing about clip art is you don't have a lot of color converting. This is generally going to be most of the colors are going to be back in the back, but I'll show you how to change all that. Okay, so um, so art is where we're going to turn it into a an embroidery file that you can use on your machine. And then so what pro is going to be where we can um, we can, I don't know Sew It Pro very much, so I'm going to show you what I can do, but I know that it it's endless what you can do. People are amazing on there. So, um, and there's tons of support on Facebook as well as SNS Computing and YouTube and stuff like that. So It Pro is really awesome. So we'll get there. Okay, so we're in here. We can have a new workspace if we decide we don't want to do the dog, but we do. Um, the open, all that stuff is right there in the file. There's save, save as. We can turn the dog around. <laughs> okay, we can just turn him, you know, just one way, make him reflect that way. 
him or her, whatever she wants to be. We can resize it. I think resize should be next. I think resize, excuse me, resize should be after crop. But um, so, and then there's crop, which we're going to go ahead and do. We're going to bring that down almost to the top of the dog's head, but don't touch the black, okay? Because we don't want to chop off the head. And then we're going to bring that up a little. Bring it over close to the tail. And then close to the nose. Not that close. There we go. And then we have to click end crop before it will do anything. Okay, so there's our doggy again. All right, and so now we're going to go ahead and resize it. My hoop will only fit a 4x4, four four, which realistically is 3.9. Uh-oh, <laughs> my numbers aren't working. 3.9. So it makes it look a lot smaller, but it's pretty... Um, uh, Mm, equal to comparable to the hoop size on your screen. So that's kind of cool when it's set at 100. But we're going to zoom in so that we can play with it at eyeball level. Okay. So posturize is cool because it's going to take all of this. It's going to take it from looking like this digital, you know, choppy piece and it's going to smooth it out while it does the color reduction and the merge color. So it's kind of really neat. So we're gonna do posturize real quick, show you what that does. And it didn't really do a whole lot, it looks like. And you can manually change everything in here. I'm gonna just leave it. So you can keep posturizing it. I've learned that if you just go out and come back in a few times, it keeps doing it. Um, but we don't want to be in posturize anymore. Okay, so let's go back to resize 3.9. Okay, so it doesn't look like the posturize did much. Okay, that one looks a little bit better. Okay, I'll show you the wizard in a second. So I just wanted to go through manually and show you what everything is doing, and then you'll understand the wizard a little bit better. Okay, so color reduction. Um, you know, you always have to, to think about the colors whenever you're taking an image and converting it from any program, from one program to another, how it's going to come out. It's not always going to have the same kind of pixels or shading and stuff like that. It's going to be a little bit different each time because the new program is trying to figure out what you're trying to send it. And um, so it has to shade in where it thinks is the best. And it's all really actually pretty fascinating. So... Okay, but we know it's two colors. We don't really have to mess around with going slow on this because there really is only two colors. And um, it's not going to be blended too much. So double check on that. Okay, so it blacks out the merge colors, the wizard, and the posturize. Okay, so let's not do that because we still want to talk about this. Okay, so now we know what the color reduction is. We have 13 colors, but we know we don't. So go in here to Merge Colors, and the Merge Colors is going to show you, um, I'm not going to read all that for you, but you're going to go in here and Merge Range, immer you can merge individually by these by clicking on it, and you can merge this, or you can merge range by clicking out, why is it, there we go, okay, merge all colors, <laughs> I didn't really want to do that. Okay, merge range will merge all colors below 50%. So see over here, we have all these 0 .000000s, 0 0.001s. They're like crazy tiny, and I'll show you. You probably can't even see. It's down here. See that? That's that 0 0.01. So we can despeckle it if we want to do that, or we can go in here to merge. Why is it not? Oh, I don't know why it's not letting me merge range. Sorry, guys. Okay, so I don't know why it's doing that. But we can merge all colors with image percentage coverage below the following. So we'll merge anything under 0.05. Okay, that leaves us with two colors. 
black and white. See? The black and the white. And we can despeckle it and it'll kind of smooth it out, but there wasn't really any speckles. So merge colors, we don't need to do the color reduction because now we're down to two. So that's what the merge colors and posturize and all that stuff does. So I'm going to go ahead and undo and undo and undo all the way back to that. Let's resize it, 3.9. Okay, and now we're going to do our image wizard. So you always want to resize before you do your image wizard because when image wizard's done, um, you want to go be able to go straight over to the stitch image. So hold on one second. We're going to go in here to the wizard. Okay, so the original image is 62 colors. That's kind of crazy. So what you're going to do, and, and we're using a really simple image, something more complicated, you're going to notice a lot of the changing. So we're going to go to the lowest color we possibly can without it changing, without it altering the image. So next, next reduce the net color number by merging image colors with suitable. So there are only three colors. We want it to completely merge as much as possible so that we can have two colors. Okay, and then reduce the speckles. Currently there are two colors. We'll go ahead and hit 100. There are no speckles really, so. Merge any remaining small percentage color areas in the image. Currently there are two colors. So we will finish it. And there you go. I know that was kind of a fast explanation, but the Merge Wizard tools on something this easy doesn't really show you a whole lot. Or not Merge Wizard, <laughs> the wizard tool, Image Wizard. So, okay. So before we move on, or not before we stitch it out, I'm just going to show you guys real quick. So the brush gives you a freehand stroke like this, and you can pick a big one. Okay. You can draw stuff on there. You can have a line that you can snap to get it perfect. And you change colors down there. Okay, filled, and the difference between the brush and the pencil is these two. So you're going to get a filled rectangle, filled ellipse, but over here you get an outline. So there's your ellipse outline, your rectangle, well, there you go, your rectangle outline. So you can switch between the two if you need something different, a different kind of shape in your design. Okay, and you can change the different sizes and the different colors. Okay, so the fill region, we can use this to change the different colors of the dog. So let's make this pretty doggy. I really think that little brown dogs are adorable, but they don't really have a good brown. That's a poopy brown. That is too. That's like poopy green brown. Well, anyways, you get the picture. <laughs> okay, so the eraser is kind of funny because it's really just like the pencil or the brush because you can change the color, any color. So let's see. You would think this background is actually white, but it's not. So if you clicked white, you can see it. So, um, we just picked two colors, but that doesn't mean that the back color is necessarily going to always turn white. It's just going to pick the the best color, the average color out of all of it. So we can choose this back and using the dropper, choose that color. And then you can just, you know, take a big chomp out of the puppy. So we her dog, yum, yum, yum. So oh, undo all that. Okay. And then the shapes, the shapes are cool. You can add different shapes and different colors and stuff. The thing about in sewer is once it's placed and you click out, it's done. Well, why did I think that? Maybe they fixed it. So that's cool. I haven't tried to play with it for a long time because I just use paint for everything. So you get a lot of different um, shapes down here that you can use. And these are cool because they're already set up to be used in embroidery. So they're nice and thick. They've got the perfect lining and everything. So let's go ahead and delete that. 
and let's click out of shapes. Red work is cool. I don't know if it's going to work on this image, but let's try. Outline. Oh, cute. So it gives you an outline. And then whenever you go in here, you click your running. We want the length of two. Why is it all blacked out? Oh, that's weird. It won't let me go any small. There we go. Two, length of 20, so red work. And then you file and save it. Okay, so I can show you all that later. <laughs> so that's cool. It worked with the dog. All right, let's get out of here. How do we? No, I want to get out of here. Undo. There we go. Okay. And now over here, there's the about. It's going to tell you all the stuff about the program. Over here is the help button. And all this stuff is up here too. So the help button has help topics. It has the auto update, the update now. So I don't have it clicked to auto update anymore because I like to know when it's coming and I like to know what's been changed and stuff if they give that information out at all. So, um, I unclick the auto update, but if you don't really care, you know, just go ahead and click the auto update. Update now will update it to the newest version. So restore defaults, about so art, and the history log. So um, that's all that stuff that's in help, and it's really, really nice and useful. Okay, so we're going to go over to our doggy again. And um, we're going to hit the stitch image button. And the stitch image button, we're going to just use a simple fill for this first one. Okay, so that'll show you. I don't usually ever change the separation or length, but people have done some really beautiful designs by changing this stuff around. And I really encourage you to play, post pictures, and tell us what settings you used. Um, it really is taking community for everybody to kind of understand the software better and um you know, and people willing to play around and people willing to post their pictures and show us what you've done, you know. So anyways, so this is the, the default stitch. The cool thing is you can change the default stitch. I'm not going to go into this too much. You can look up um, one of my old videos, the basic stitches tutorial. It kind of goes through everything. So um, we're going to do the fill. We'll do a simple, we'll do something cute because he is adorable. I do like the diamond fill. Okay, so if we were going to fill it and turn it on to something, you know, print it out or use it in a key fob or something, that would be a really cute design. So we're going to go ahead and clear stitches. I'm just going to go through these real quick and show you right here, outline border. This is going to outline the puppy dog. And that's all. It's just going to be one. It'll, you know, give you your satin. It's just one line. No big deal. Okay. Outlines. And, and the ch you want to change your, your stitches down here. Well, okay. So <laughs> it's kind of a quick tip is the height here is um, on the satin. You want it to be pretty tall and you want the length in between it to be a little bit smaller. So for this dog, we want it to be maybe 35. That would be cute, and it would still be able to navigate these corners pretty good. The smaller the height, the better it's going to navigate the corners. So if you're doing something with a lot of tight turns, you're going to probably want a smaller height going on there. Okay, so there's your doggy. It's going to have a lot of fat fur. Down here, it's going to be a little bit jumbled over each other, but I think that will just make the tail look cute. Okay, so let's clear the stitches. Outline center line. This isn't going to work for this one because it sees the whole dog as one line. So watch. <laughs> it's trying to follow a line as best as it can, but it's not going to work for this. So if the dog was an outline, kind of like um, how it was in the red work, if it was an outline, then you could click outline center line on the, the red line, and it would follow that red line with whatever settings you choose. So the applique border and applique center line work exactly the same way. The only difference is when you click applique border and you've got to change your settings each time up here and double check them over here on your right. Um, if you click your, your applique, it's going to give you, it doesn't show you in here, but it gives you your dye line. So you're going to put that onto your fabric or onto your stabilizer 
and then it's going to give you, um, then you're going to put your fabric down over the top of the die line, then it's going to give you your tack down stitch, and then it's going to give you your final stitch. And you have all of these to choose from, from your final stitch. And, um, and your tack down, right after your tack down is where you're going to cut it out, and then it'll do your final stitch. So that's how the applique works in here in a nutshell. Okay, so, but the other part is the one part that makes it really fun and easy for a lot of people. And um, if you're doing simple designs like this and you want to sell them on Etsy, this is a fast way to do it. Just come in here to auto sew color, I'm sorry, auto sew image. And it's going to say set transparent color. Remember that background, how that background's slightly gray? We want it, we don't want it to, to also embroider that. So we're, oops. <laughs> Ah, uh, sorry, I meant to go back to fill. So make sure you're at fill, your default stitch. It doesn't go back to default just because you stop playing in there. You have to go back in and make sure. Okay, so check your settings and then go up here to auto sew image, set transparent color, click on the back and it's gonna auto sew that. Very, very simple. So then you would file, save as, and the cool thing about it is we're just gonna save it on our desktop and we'll call it, we'll make a new folder real quick. Maybe. I don't know why that's not working. Okay, so, well, we'll just put it in new folders. Okay, so let's save it as a PNG and we'll just call it um, Doxy Default. That sounds kind of bad, but, ooh, I didn't realize that was on. <laughs> Doxy Default. Okay, and this is just gonna save the image for us. And then it's gonna give us the option for the um, different kinds of types of files that we can save. Mine is a PES and it's on the top, so I never really have to change it. And then, so it gives you, I think, eight other kinds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, so it gives you eight altogether. I'm gonna choose PES, double check your pattern size. If the thread color really matters to you, you can change it down there. Um, I think everybody uses such a variety of thread these days that I don't think anybody really follows the suggestions too much, but um, you can have all those. And this is join adjacent same colored threads. So um, this, if you have multi-colored or multi-image, multi-pieced image, you're gonna want that so that it does like all the black at one time and all the green at one time kind of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so that's all there is to it for SoArt. SoArt is very, very simple digitizing. And the more you play with it, the better you're going to get at it. That's all there really is to it. Um, it seems really hard. Sometimes people think they can do a logo and they bring it in and it's not what they thought. It's not um, where you just take a picture and it turns it into an embroidery file. You are the missing link you actually have to be the digitizer, you have to program it. So, um, you know, it's really, really, really cool <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, so now we're gonna go back on to the internet. Do, 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 do. This is my son's computer. It's so nice for letting me use it. <laughs> Okay, so, oh no, we don't need to do that. Okay, so it's going to open straight up to that. Now, um, you can go onto YouTube, you can go into SoArt, and, um, you know, there's tons of stuff on SoArt for, I mean, tons of stuff on YouTube for SoArt and SoArt Pro. So now we're going to go back to S A N S. It's already in my computer computing and we're going to go to shop and go to sew up pro 
And like I said, I don't know a whole lot about So What Pros, so I'm just going to go from my current perspective um, and just really kind of give you the basics and do a basic file of something that I know how to do that is really fun. So, okay. Hold on one second. Okay, so the Sew Up Pro Embroidery Editor. Okay, so Sew Up Pro is really cool because you can take, um, say that you bought a file and it's too big, you can take it and uh, make it smaller. Or you bought a file that's really small, you can make it bigger. And you can merge designs and everything. It's so cool. Okay, and like I said, I don't know very much about it yet, so I can't wait to see and learn more. All right, so So What Pro is software for viewing, editing, and converting embroidery files for various different sewing manufacturers. It includes various integrated project management features. See the description of So What, for, so what Pro features below. A plugin is available from Maria Cross. See features list below for converting cross stitch files to embroidery files. That's cool. I didn't even know that it did that. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Okay, use the download button to install both the free 30-day demo, no purchase necessary, and the retail version, as well as the up-to-date software. Do not update during the demo period, as this will cause immediate expiration of the trial. Mac users should click the Mac download button below to install the wineskin wrapper application file which allows you to run Sew It Pro on a Mac computer. Download the manual for more details about the many features available in Sew It Pro. So I have not downloaded the manual again. <laughs> I kind of just like to get into a program or run with it, but um, I bet reading the download I uh, read reading the manual will just open up my mind for everything. Okay, so Sew It Pro is you download it for 65 bucks um, or you download the 30-day trial and let's see international support they have three different countries Denmark France and the Netherlands here's the features okay so this is really fun okay view embroidery files even if they are included in zip or RAR archives view thumbnail thumbnails in album view or files in your working directory Write designer dash one floppy disks and USB drives. Use true type fonts to create monogram lettering. Resize, reposition, delete, rotate, and merge sewing patterns. Convert from and save to various file formats. See chart below, either individually or in batch mode. In batch mode means where you can save all the different file types at once. So if you want to sell them, and you can create a zip file of all of that stuff at once instead of having to individually file, save as, file, save as, file, save as, which you have to do on SOART. SOART, you have to save individually. And I keep meaning to send an email to, um, to them asking if they can create the batch mode in SOART as well. But um, that would be really cool. So simulate the real-time stitch out of a pattern. Change individual thread colors and background fabrics. Print out the design and design summary. View or hide a stitch histogram of this thread length distribution for each pattern. Hide or view as thickened or dashed lines the jump stitches, which is really cool. You can see where your jump stitches are going to be. So can kind of think ahead about things. Icon toolbar button to toggle between thread pane information and alphabet mode for easy entering of pre-digitized lettering. Applique cutter tool for creating SVG and JPG files for outline of applique. Used to cut applique fabric in Cameo and Cricut software. Cutting toolbar allows graphical separation of patterns as specific stitches. Density adjustment dialog to resize a pattern at constant density. Graphical or text-based reordering of thread color stops is available. Capability to write smart media or compact flashcards for Singer, Brother, Genome, and New Bernina machines. Converts cross-stitch patterns to embroidery files using a plugin from Maria Cross. You, might, you may download the demo or purchase the MC plugin for Sew Up Pro here. Once the plugin is installed, it becomes seamlessly integrated into the Sew Up Pro workspace and can be used to preview and convert a variety of cro different cross-stitch formats. After updating to Windows 8 slash 8.1, if the plugin stops working, simply uninstall and reinstall to reactivate it. 
supports a command line interface for file conversion, which has the form soapro.exe file one.ext one file, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so you guys get it. All right, so integrated project management features of Soap Pro includes an editable table for entering project information, easily editable list of thread colors and manufacturer brands, capability to read, write thread color TXT files for simple multiple single slash multiple projects, thread palettes from over 15 manufacturers are available, customizable user defined thread palettes can be easily added. File types supported by Soap Pro. So there you go. There's a lot. Okay, so down here, same thing. They have all the video tutorials. There's some really awesome ones. And in our Soap Pro group, or Soap, well, yeah, in the Soap Pro group and in the Soart group, there's some really knowledgeable people that also have um, videos online that are really helpful in getting you started and also helping you just do some really awesome advanced stuff. I haven't got too much into SoArt yet, or I mean SoArt Pro yet. I'm still, I'm still trying to understand SoArt really good and be able to, pro, you know, get a really good digitized image out before I move on to trying to wrap my head around SoArt Pro. Um, but we're going to go ahead and open up Soap Pro and play around with some stuff. And I'm so excited about this because this is, this changed my whole world with being, I don't really make a whole lot of um, designs to sell, even though I, that's my goal eventually. I think I have like 15 things on my Etsy page, but um, I really just love making things for other people. And I love just having an idea come in my head and being able to come over to Sew It Pro and just be able to make it or Sew Art, you know. And we can make something in Sew Art and bring it over to Sew It Pro. And that's really cool. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So we did that with the dog. Let's open up the dog. Boop, doo doo. -doo. New folder, Doxy default. Okay. And there he is. Okay, so cute. Okay, so in here we can make him bigger. So right here is going to show us the project name, the size. So you'll always be able to see what your size is. You never get to the end and you're like surprised, like, oh, I forgot to resize. You always can see it right here. Tells you your total stitches. And here's the color pane. Normally, whenever you have a lot of things, you have a lot of colors. This is your histogram. If you click on this, it's going to bring up your color palettes down here. Okay. And it's going to let me change it to any color I want. And this is just with Brildor. So if you want to, big, you know, changing, uh, you know, big group of colors. This one has tons of different shades. You can change them any color you want. And if you're looking for a very specific color, just keep, keep looking, you know, you never know. You never know what people are going to have. So he's so cute as baby blue. Okay. So right now he's centered in the middle of it. Okay, so let's just go up here real quick. So we have the file. It's got everything, you know, like a normal program. So this is just where we can edit files that we've already made or somebody else has made. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a file that I've made and I'm going to mix it with, so I don't remember what I was saying. So up here, file, we have edit, view, tools, options, window, help. You know, we can go through all that on a much deeper basis. But, you know, like I said, I don't really know how a lot of stuff about it. I just know what I can do in here. And it's really exciting. So I'm just going to show you what I can do. But I want you to take your brain and take it to the limit. So um, there's so much stuff. And watch a lot of other videos, especially in Sewa Pro, because you're going to be really excited once you're able to figure out a lot of this stuff. So we're going to take this dog. Some of the things that um, I've noticed that are cool is this adjust density button. You can adjust the pull compensation. I don't know what these really mean, <laughs> but it, the density kind of beefs it up and the pull compensation smooths it out. 
So density, the defaults are in there. I don't really do too much changing around, but um, I'm just going to leave it as the way that SOAR made it. I don't really need to change anything, but you can. Okay, here's the resize button if you want to make this dog little. If you want to, let's see, edit, copy, and then edit, paste. We got two dogs now. <laughs> let's make the doggies kiss because that's just adorable. Okay, let's, where's the little button? Figured there'd be, oh, I'm so silly. Okay, so the way to turn them is manually like this. Right? Nope, that's just going to turn them upside down. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Okay, so that's actually something I realize I don't know how to do in this. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> okay, but what we are going to do is we are going to merge it with a font. And I love Planet Applique fonts so much. And I know there's tons of fonts everywhere, but I am a Planet applique holic Let's see. Okay, and I also have little um the in in the bean stitch. It's a I think it's called the bean stitch. You can find them on Facebook or on the internet. They have um small fonts. So I have these half inch, you know, tiny fonts to go on little things like keychains and um, you know, just tiny stuff. They're meant for little stuff. And we can use those, but Planet Applique has such cute fonts. Okay, so their font, let's do something cute. So simple things like, let's see, who should we make this for? Is there any birthdays coming up? Oh yeah, my grandma's birthday is coming up. But I don't know if she likes those. I don't know anybody that has one. So let's just, let's just write love underneath it because that always works. Love always works, always works, always wins. Okay, L, and then we're going to click open. So remember, we're merging this first one. And then after that, so it's going to show us the different colors. And don't worry too much about the placement right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up here to icons. Let's get rid of that. Icons. And our whole alphabet's going to come up over here on the side. A bunch of other stuff is probably going to come up because I haven't done this. So if you have this that comes up and kind of, <laughs> you know, takes up all the space, go up here to delete album folders. And we're going to delete the little birds. I made something for my Grammy the other day. It was cute. Okay. And we can delete anything else. So let's do the original designs we don't need that and we don't need the new folder stuff okay so oh i forgot to show you i'll show you another really cool feature in a second okay so let's do l o b E. Okay, so there's all of your letters. They're all individual files. So this is E and it's a PES file. And so I'm going to link them all together, bring them down here under the dog. Make sure it stays centered. I don't know why I moved it. <laughs> okay, bring it up a little bit. So now it looks like it's going to be on the dog a little bit. I don't really want that. We can do that. We could even do it sideways. It'd be cute, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so let's regroup these things. Oh, actually, so see how it's 
it's meant to look like it's cursive. So we're going to take these and move these over just a little bit so they link up. Okay. Okay, so then click out. Then we're gonna go to click, 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 click. Make sure you get each of those letters. And we're gonna go up here to resize. And we're gonna just bring it down a little bit. Just, we're gonna bring it down to 80%. There we go. And now we're gonna center it. Okay. So we can bring it down a little bit. It doesn't have to be so close to the doggy. All right. So then once we've done this, we can get out of icons. And icons right here to show us our dog. And then one, two, three, four, five. So we can change the color or we can delete. the. We can edit all three colors that are the same and change the color to purple. Oops, that was supposed to. <laughs> well, I thought that's how it worked. It did that to me the other day, so I thought that's how it worked. Maybe it still does. Okay. Nope. Well, in any case, you can change it to be any different colors. You can have all the different colors in between. Oh, now it's doing it. <laughs> so you can do that. And then let's unclick that and if you want to you can have each of these colors be well you don't want white but in any case you can have them be all different colors okay but we're gonna undo all that hard work turn them all back into purple And then we're gonna go up here to edit, join threads. This is the part I love because it takes, if you have to do it without Sew It Pro or some sort of edit, editing software, you're taking each of those files on your little um, screen on your embroidery machine and you're trying to line it up with everything, you know, just with your needle and the little guide and the square. So this joins everything Okay, you can join all adjacent threads of the same color, which is cool for something like this. It'll do it. But if you have something like applique, you don't want it to do that because sometimes it'll join the two applique threads and you don't want it to do that. So um, for this one, you could do that. Or if you have something that has, you know, colors that you don't want to join, you just come in here and you start it at thread number two. And that just makes you, that gives you just two two changes on your machine instead of having to change each color, which you wouldn't because you wanted all one color, you'd have to sit there and push the button each time. So that, that shows you a quick way to do all of these. So let's unjoin these real quick so that we can still play with the dog. So border tool is something else that I figured out that's super cool. So auto border and all the settings. I haven't really messed around with the settings too much and I haven't, actually used it on anything I printed out or sewn out. So um, you can do auto border. <laughs> That's going to give us a border on everything. And I just wanted to do it around the dog. So I guess we would do the border before we put the love in. So that does like, you know, the bean stitch or whatever around whatever you're trying to get it to do. And we don't want that too much. Okay or it does an auto border, or you can do custom border, which is really cool. You start, this is how you do key fobs and felties and stuff like that really nicely. So you just walk around the dog and you know, if you want to sew these out, it's gonna look really nice if you take your time and don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> And then save border stitches. And there you go. So it's really, really, really cool. 
Those are the things that I know how to do on Sew It Pro so far. There's a few other things, um, but you know, I am learning. So I just wanted to kind of show you guys the difference between the two and I'm not gonna keep going backwards. Let's just open a new one. I wanna show you one of my favorite features of having Sew It Pro and it's the reason why I opened Sew It Pro probably more than anything else. But say I'm looking for a specific design um, from Planet Applique, and I have so many of their designs. And I'm like, okay, I want to know what um, this Labrador puppy applique looks like. I haven't seen it in a long time. And instead of having to um, open it up on my embroidery machine to see what it looks like, it will actually open it in this little screen so I can tell. And then I can open it in Sew so It Pro and it shows me what the stitch out is actually gonna look like. So that's really exciting. And say I wanna merge it with um, a boat. I don't know why I would. And the other thing is you can you can choose your file type or you can choose any type that's on here because you're um oh let's do this one especially. So because you're um you're editing and you're gonna save it into the file type you want once you're done editing. Okay, so here's Planet Applique little boat and a doggy. Let's have the dog sit up. <laughs> sit up. Okay, so let's move the dog over here. And something I wanted to show you that's kind of, um, Planet Applique is, they have amazing designs. And so they protect their images sometimes by putting this little printout that's always hidden underneath your stuff. But it's kind of a scary thing whenever it happens to you because you don't know what it's printing out until it starts to print it out. And you can read that it says Planet Applique. Um, and because so uh, so at Pro, you can see this ahead of time instead of waiting for it to show up on your machine and you're like, what is that? You can go in here and find the one that says Planet Applique. It's going to be in white or silver. It's going to be under all this, so maybe it's, yeah, see, so you can find this and delete it. Then whenever you go in to do your, your sew out, you don't have to deal with that. So that's really cool. All right, so that's kind of all I wanted to show you guys. And I hope that this, I know it was a really long video, but I hope that it helped you to understand the difference and why um, why you would buy one and not the other and why they would work together beautifully. Alrighty, so um, thanks again so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye.